Okay, so yeah, welcome to week five for 194A, the class about Android. So there's actually not that much in terms of new concepts I want to cover today. Logistics, there's a couple things I want to announce. At the end of last week, we talked about Recycler View, which is the primary way that you show a list of items in Android. So I want to do an example, a coding example with all of you today, where we implement that. Just I think that'll give you a much better sense of how to use it, because we're going to be using that in the next project. And then the main topic for today is something called intents. So intents are fundamental to Android. Every single app are going to use intents to pretty much do any action, it's like opening up a new screen, opening up the camera. All of those things are intents in the world of Android. So we'll spend some time talking about that. So logistics, you all have seen this diagram. Right now we're at week five. Um, so Uh, actually, this is off by one. This is a, <laughs> so this should actually be, there's a 10 week quarter this quarter um, as opposed to spring quarter. Um, so assignment two, which is Google Maps, has just been assigned. So you don't, this diagram is a bit deceiving. Um, assignment one just finished up. So at this point, you all should have submitted the assignment and have received feedback from your partner about uh, kind of what you did in terms of extensions and what you did, uh, what you could have improved on or what was really nice about your project. So the next project is called Google Maps or Google My Maps. After this, there's one more assignment. And at the very end of the class, we're gonna have an industry panel discussion. Um, one other thing in terms of logistics is I'm really excited for next week during lecture, the last maybe half an hour of next week's lecture. So week six, we're gonna have a guest speaker and the guest speaker is Nikhil Vishwanathan. So just curious, has anyone heard of his, the app that he had built uh, uh, two years ago? It's called Down to Lunch. Give me like a thumbs up or a, or, or like a clap if you've heard of it. No one? Okay, well, this down, I remember um, pretty distinctly when it came out. The so Down to Lunch was this app in 2018, which went viral and it hit number one in the App Store, in the Apple App Store. And then so Nick Hill and his co-founder made this app, it blew up, and they very quickly created an Android app right after. And so um, it's actually quite interesting because like after it launched, there was essentially like a smear campaign where someone claimed that the app was used for human trafficking. Um, and so like the app didn't do that well after that. It kind of was like, a, it was, top of the charts for like a couple of weeks and then it kind of died out and so it no one uses it anymore uh, but the reason i think this is really exciting is because Nikhil has the experience not only of building the ios app and having it blow up but also the android app and the thing is that this down to lunch app is not complicated i if you take this class all of you could easily build dtl in like a weekend it's that simple and it blew up and so i think just hearing his experience about building that app um, will be really interesting and then uh, what he's doing now is for the past around two years or so, a year and a half, he's been working on a company called Alchemy. And Alchemy is a blockchain development platform which powers millions of users. And so um, he can talk more about what that means. So basically they're creating infrastructure for blockchain. All right. So as of today, assignment number two is out. Assignment number two is called Mind Maps. So like we talked about, Mind Maps is basically an app where um, you can you want to build on the concepts we talked about today. Recycler view. We're going to have some Google Maps integration, and we're also going to deal with multiple activities. And the way the the application works is that you can decide which places are important to you and save them into a map. So, for example, I have a map here called January Vacation Planning. Um, I could have another map which is called like My Favorite Places at Stanford, and like save distinct locations at Stanford. And the idea is that it's a nice way to kind of package up places that you care about. So this is more, this is going to be a bit um, more time consuming than project one. Project one, the walkthrough video is about an hour long, right? The walkthrough video for this project is about an hour and a half or like a little bit more than an hour and a half. So just budget the appropriate time for this. Uh, the My Maps project is due a week and a half from today. So October 25th. And then similar to what we did for the tip calculator project, between Sunday and Wednesday of after it's due, you'll have the opportunity to, to give feedback to your partner. And same thing, nothing changes in terms of submission. You take the GitHub link that you have and you submit that to Canvas. 
Okay, that's it. What questions do you have before we get into the Android content for today? Anything? Okay, perfect. So recycler view. We talked about, we, I showed you this slide last week. The recycler view is a component on Android, which is probably one of the most complicated components. And the reason is because it's doing something very complicated underneath, which is that you're trying, trying to display a list of items uh, and that list of data could be coming from an API, like some, some internet service, or it could be coming from a database on your phone or it could be coming from something that you construct dynamically in Kotlin code. So that's the data set part. Then the adapter of the recycler view is responsible for taking that data wherever it comes from and binding it to a view holder. And a view holder is something which is managed by something called a layout manager. And the layout manager is, what is responsible for putting these views onto the screen. And that's how you have, that's the outcome of this, is that you have a scrollable list of items that you can look at. So because of how common lists of items are, pretty much every Android app in the world is going to have a recycler view. So like the reason I picked the tip calculator project for project one is because it was one of the few projects that I could think of, which doesn't have a list of things to scroll through. But if you look at almost all the apps that you probably use every single day, um, you'll find tons of examples about a list of things to scroll through, like Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, everything is basically a list. And the reason why recycler view is called recycler view is because it's recycling views, right? And the idea is that in this example, you're scrolling up. And so as soon as a view goes off the screen, we scrap it and it goes into this recycled pile. And when a new view comes onto the screen, rather than recreating that view from scratch, we take a view from the recycled pile and then we bind the data to it. And then, uh, then it gets shown onto the screen with this new data as a result of the binding process. And that's really important for memory, right? When you have a mobile phone, you're operating in a data constrained and power constrained environment. And so you need to be cognizant or you need to be aware of how much data are you using? How much memory, how much power are you using? And Recycler View will help you with that. And so what I wanna do is actually do a quick example of coding this up with you in Android Studio. So don't worry about like following along with me. I just want you to focus on watching and, and paying attention and then feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to build this app where it's, we have some dummy data where we have a list of people and the people are called, like the name of that person is person one and the age of that person is one. Person two, age is two. And then we're gonna have like a hundred of these. And I wanna show these list of hundred people in my app. So hopefully you all can see, I'm on Android Studio now. And so I've done a little bit already for you. So right now, let me just show you, if I run the app, what happens? Okay, so nothing. there's nothing really interesting happening here. Um, I just have a hello world here, um, which we're gonna replace with the list of content. So I think initially when you look at Recycler View, it's gonna be a little bit overwhelming. But if you break it down into steps, it'll be a lot more manageable to think about how to implement it. Okay, so there are six steps. The, and I have some starter code here, which will make it go a little bit faster for us. Okay, let's start with step number one. Add the Recycler View Android X library to the Gradle build file. What that means is that Recycler View, the, the code which powers it, isn't included by default in your application you need to include a library in order to tell Android, hey, I want you to include this code into my app so I can actually start referencing the Recycler View. So the first step is we need to add the Recycler View library into the Gradle build file. So we have this build.gradle file, which is located in the app module. Let me show you that. So do you see how it says um, build.gradle module app? But this file contains all the different libraries that are inside of our application. Now the first step is let's add the Recycler View. And you could add it manually here by just Googling for what is the dependency I need for a cycle view. But there's another way to do it, which is what I recommend doing, which is go into the activity main. So let me go into here. Um, and right now we have this text view. I want to get rid of that. And instead of the, um, 
instead of the text view, I want to have a recycler view. So I'm going to drag out the recycler view. And the width and height can both, both be match parent. Match parent means I want to take up the whole screen width and screen height. And so typically when you do that, you'll automatically have included the library by dragging out the recycler view. So in my case, it actually did, <laughs> um, it, that didn't happen because I had done this before. And I think Android Studio is not smart enough to, to figure out that the library was added before, but now it got deleted. And so let me just do the manual way. So what you can do is just Google for Android recycler view. And then if you scroll down to right here, do you see how it says dependencies and you add in this line? So I'm going to copy that implementation. Okay, and then as soon as you click this. Um, actually, I think I need a different like their view. Okay, let's try this one. So basically, um, there are like two different versions of, of the library and the one that you want is the Android X one. Um, and Android X is basically a renaming of many libraries. So that's what we'll do here. Okay, then we'll tap on sync now. And what that's doing is it's actually gonna download that library and, and include it in our project. So at the bottom here, it says like where we are. So that seems to have finished. So now um, we have the recycle view properly inside of main activity. So this first one is done. And the second step is define a model class to use as a data source. And so what I've done here is I've defined a data class person and a person has two attributes, a name and an age. A name is a string and the age is an integer, right? That makes sense. And moreover, I've also defined this function here. And what this function is doing is it's creating a list of a hundred dummy people, right? Does this make sense what, what's happening here? I'm creating an empty list and I'm adding to that list one person a hundred times. And each person is gonna have a name of person number X and the age of that person is gonna be per, um, age X. So this is the second step. And then the third step is add the recycler view to your activity to display the item. And actually we just did that, right? That was me dragging out the recycler view into the XML file. So this is also done. So it looks like we're doing pretty good, right? We're already done with three out of six. But the next few steps are a little bit more involved. Um, but before we go on, does everyone, does everyone know, like any questions so far? Everyone know where we are and where we're headed? We're good? Okay. So the objective now is basically that we have the list of contacts, right? Let me actually do that. So I'll say val contacts is equal to create contacts. Right, and this is our data source. Um, and now we wanna create a custom row layout XML file to visualize the item. What this means is that we need to tell the recycler view how should each person, how should each row of our data be displayed in our application? All right, the, there's no magic here, right? Like the recycler view, recycler view won't magically know how to display it. We need to tell it, okay, we, we want a text view of this size, of this color, and we want it to be located here, right? And so that's what we're gonna do in step number four. So the way this works is uh, I typically go into the same directory which activity main.xml is located. That'll be in the resources directory. And then right click on layout, and let's create a new layout resource file. And we'll call this item person. So the idea is that this is representing one person. So the file name is item person. The root element can be constraint layout, that's fine. Tap on okay. All right, so here, the idea is that this is going to represent one row of our recycler view. And so one row means one person. So there's two things that we wanna show here. One is the person's name, and the second is the person's age. So the first text view I'm dragging out, let me zoom in a little bit, is this is gonna represent the person's age. So I'll say the ID is TV um, name, the person's name. Um, and the text, why don't we just call it person five, right? Um, let's add some left margin just to make it look a little better. 16 from the left. 
and let's make the font a little bit larger. So I'm going to go into text appearance and make it large. And then there's one more text you want to drag out, which is the age of the person. So I'm going to, using the constraint layout, there are two things you need to think about, right? One is horizontally, every view must be constrained horizontally. And the second part is every view must be constrained vertically. And so um, I just, let me undo what I did. So right now, the view, um, so right, right now, I've constrained the top of this bottom text view to the bottom of the name text view. But if I hover over here, let's see. Okay, so basically right now it's constrained vertically below the name text view and to the left from 16 DP from the left end of the screen. And so it's constrained both horizontally and vertically, which is what you want. So let's give it an ID. Let's call it TV age, which means text view age. And then let's give it some sample text here of age um, 38, right? And maybe we'll provide some padding in between the two, make it like eight. Okay, so this is going to represent one person in our text view. So that, that was number four. We created a custom row XML. So the next step is probably the most involved step, which is you wanna create a recycler view adapter and view holder to render the item. So the way this works is in the activity main, um, we have a recycler view, right? Let's give this an ID. So I'll call this RV contacts. And what that means is recycler view contacts, right? That's what this component is referring to. And what we're talking about here in step number five is we wanna create a recycler view adapter and view holder. So on the recycler view, RV contacts, there's an attribute called the adapter. So our job now is to create an adapter so the recycler view will know how to take our data, our data is contacts, and turn that into a view. So that will be the job of the adapter. So I'm gonna create an adapter called contacts adapter. And the adapter is gonna take in two parameters in the constructor. The first is a context, where are we in the app? So that's this. And the second is going to be the data source, contacts. Okay, and this contacts adapter doesn't exist yet, right? So that's why it's highlighted in red. But Android Studio can help us to create it. So I'll hit that red light bulb and I'll say create class um, context adapter and make it into a separate file. All right, so the first parameter is gonna be the context. So I actually wanna rename this to be context. And main activity is what we passed in, but main activity is an example of a context, right? So I'm just gonna call this context. And the second parameter is a list of people. That's what is called context here. Um, and then Android Studio is smart enough to know that this class that we are creating will inherit or be a subclass of the recycler view adapter. And the reason it knows that is because rvcontext.adapter has to be of type recycler view adapter. Okay, there's one more thing I wanna do before we start implementing this class, which is I wanna create my own view holder. And my own view holder will be referencing the item person.xml that we had created earlier. Okay, so let me actually delete this and I'll explain what I'm doing in a little bit in our class view holder. And this is going to inherit from the cycler view view holder. Okay, so um, question. This is a lot that I just wrote really quick. Can someone just explain to me? Um, what does this line mean? So I have recycler view dot adapter and I have this angle bracket and I have in here the name of a class. Can someone explain to me what does that mean? Has anyone seen this before? Yeah, so Kevin is saying this is an example of a generic or template. Yeah, I like, I like where that's going. Anyone wanna add some more detail on, on that answer? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, so basically the answer is that it's exactly kind of what Kevin's saying. Like if you're coming from a background in Java or even in Kotlin, right? Like look at this. So we have these angle brackets and inside we're saying the list is of type person, 
right? That's what this is mean. That's what this means. Like that list has a template and each element in that list has a certain type, which is defined by that. And so a similar concept applies here. So what we're saying is that this recycler view adapter is parameterized or templatized by this contacts adapter dot view holder, which is referring to an inner class that we defined right here. And so basically what this communicates to the Android system is that our adapter is responsible for binding and unbinding view holders. So it's essentially a list of these view holder classes. That's what this means. Now we're ready to actually implement it. So there are three methods that have to be implemented with every recycler view. And that's why this is complaining. So if I hit this red light bulb and say implement members, there are three methods here. I'm gonna just select all of them and hit okay. And then my preference is usually just to put the inner class view holder at the bottom. I'm gonna put this down here. Okay. So now let me quickly walk through each of these. So on create view holder is responsible for creating a new view. Create a new view. Um, so this, this expensive is this method being called is expensive because we're actually creating a brand new view rather than recycling a view, recycling a view. So this is expensive. Get item count is intended to count how many items are in a data set. Return how many. And then on bind view holder, the idea of this is that we want to take the data, which is located at this position and bind it or attach it to the view holder, which is defined here. So bind the data at position into the view holder. This is why um, the recycle is a little bit complicated. Is that there's a lot of code that you have to fill in. In terms of overriding stuff, all of these are have this keyword override. And the reason these have all these methods are over overriding something is because if you look at the recycler view adapter, you can see that these methods are all abstract. And what abstract means is that the responsibility of giving an implementation is on the subclass. So right, so we've on create view holder, which is abstract, on bind view holder is abstract, and then similarly on bind and then there should be one more. So there's like basically three abstract methods and those three are exactly the ones that we're overriding right here. Okay, so someone help me out. Get item count is probably the easiest one to do. Can someone tell me what should I fill out right here? How do I know how many items are in my data set? Yes, Kevin is saying return context that size. Exactly, right? So. I mentioned earlier that there are two parameters to the context adapter. One is a context, which we're going to use later. And the second is contacts, which is the actual data. And so if we, this method is asking for how many items are in the data set. So exactly what Kevin is saying is that we want to return the size of contacts. Oh, and actually one thing that we need to do is in order to reference contacts, we need to actually give this the keyword val up here. So now I can say contacts dot size. Cool, we're done with that one. And one thing I'll just quickly improve or modify a little bit here is Kotlin has a really nice functionality. If you have a one line method body, you can actually remove the some parts of the method header. So I can reduce this to being this. Right, does that make sense? So get item count. It's it's unambiguous from here that get item count will re return an integer because context.size is the integer. And because it's a one line return, we can just inline it right here. Okay, amazing. Now the next two, um, let me quickly walk through. So on create view holder, like we said, is responsible, responsible for creating a brand new view. The way we'll do that is we're gonna call a static method on the layout inflator. So I'll call layout inflator from, and this, this method, takes in a context. And that's why I passed in the context as the first parameter here. And then we're going to inflate our layout. And the layout is the one that we had just defined a couple minutes ago called item person. And there are two more parameters to the inflate method. One, the first one is the resource ID, which is r.layout.itemPerson. 
The second is the view group, the, the root view group. And that's going to be the parent, which is handed in as a parameter here. And the last parameter is attached to root. And we're going to pass in false here. And the reason we pass in false is because the recycler view will take care of attaching this view to the root element and not um, the layout inflator. So this method is going to return to us a view. And our job now is to simply return a view holder from this method. And that's as simple as calling the view holder constructor with the view. All right, so we're done with two out of three now. And the last one is on bind view holder. So before I fill that out, I want to first fill out the implementation of the view holder inner class that we have. So what we talked about is that the view holder is essentially a wrapper around the view that we defined, item person to XML. And so the first thing I want to do is whenever we create a new view holder, I want to get references to each of the components in our item person to XML. So I'll say val TV name is equal to the item view here is, rep is representing one row. So I'll say item view dot find view by ID. And now we need to pass in the ID of, of the name field, right? And if you go back to item person XML, you can see that the ID I gave it was TV name. So I'll say R dot ID dot TV name. And something very similar will happen now for age. Cool. Okay, so now that we have those defined, we can actually do the work here for on bind view holder. So the first thing is we want to bind the data at the position into the view holder. So the way to get the data at this position is easy. We just say contacts at that position, right? And this is going to return to us a particular contact. So what this method is saying is take the data, which is inside of this contact, and bind it to this view holder. So I'll say holder dot bind and pass in the contact. And so now bind is a method that we have to define on the view holder. So I'm going to have Android Studio help me with that. Hit this red light bulb and create a member function um, inside of the view holder. Let me actually move these below. Um, yeah. And then this is where I'm going to ask for your help to fill this out. But Kevin has a question, what will happen if each call on get item count returns a different value? For example, return an infinite list that keeps retrieving new data. Okay, so that's a good question. And that's, it's a very common pattern where, for example, if you open up the Twitter app, right, you're not gonna get all the tweets, like you're gonna probably retrieve with one API call, maybe 50 tweets or 100 tweets. And as you scroll to the bottom of that list, there's some logic which will get triggered, which will fetch more tweets. And so then what happens is um, the logic for fetching more data shouldn't live inside the adapter. That should live in your main activity or some other class, other component in your application. So what will happen is that that API call or that um, code to fetch more data will execute and then will inform the adapter that, hey, now we have more data. And when that method gets called, then the get item count will um, return the new size and then the recycler view will automatically figure out that I should allocate more space and, and render those other items. So that pattern of being able to fetch more data as you scroll is actually super common. Um, and there's recycle view handles that uh, pretty well. If I didn't answer your question, let me know, Kevin. But I think, cool. All right, so now the last thing we need to do in terms of implementing the adapter is this bind method. So the idea is that bind the data in contacts in the contact, right? So that the objective is the data that lives inside of contact, we should bind it into the views that we have here. So can someone help me out? So let me remind you, in mainactivity.colin, a person has two attributes, the name and the age, right? So we have one example person right now, right here. So someone tell me, how do I fill out the, the name, the text view, which is TV name, with the proper information. What do you all think? 
I love that. So what Christian is saying is you say TV name, the way you modify or update the text of a text view is exactly what Christian said. So TV name dot text. And we're going to set this equal to the data. The data is exactly contact dot name, right? That's beautiful. And same thing with TV age. So I'll say the age of this person is going to be age followed by the actual age of the contact, right? The contact dot age. Does that make sense to everyone? That's a great answer. Okay, so that's, that's it. We're done with the adapter. So if we go back to mainactivity.kotlin, now we have set the adapter properly. The very last thing we need to do is add a layout manager into the uh, recycler view. So the way that works is you say RV contacts dot layout manager. And also sometimes the inner studio will like figure, forget how to reference these. So let me just build the app again and hopefully it'll come back. Are we good? Oh yeah, so it came back. Um, so whenever you see these red underlines and you don't expect it, sometimes Android Studio has lost the link between this variable name and the underlying view name. And so just by rebuilding, it'll come back. So now, now, now that we have that, let me come back and say RV contacts dot layout manager. Come on. Yeah, okay. And you need to pass in a layout manager. The layout manager, there are a couple built-in ones. So we're just gonna use a built-in one for now. So we'll, we'll say linear layout manager. And this takes in one parameter, which is the context, which is this. Okay, right? and that's it. Um, Yang Hong is asking, what is the object context? Okay, so you, are you asking basically like the context that we're passing inside of context adapter and linear layout manager? Is that right? So context is like, um, it's a very core part of Android. And essentially it's a God object, which means that context, as the name implies, context is intended to tell the Android system, where are we in our application? So a very common example of a context is an activity. So for here, we're running our code instead of main activity. And let me show you, if I just um, keep, if I keep um, going up the hierarchy of the classes, so I'm, just, I'm, I'm going deep in the Android SDK now. So here, um, basically we get to this point where we have a context wrapper and a context wrapper is essentially a context object. So that, that's like proof that main activity is an example of a context. And the way the Android system uses it is whenever the Android system needs to um, be able to reference, for example, a string or a resource, it needs to know where in the application am I? And that's why you have to pass in a context into many different built-in Android things. And the reason you need that is because depending on where you are in your application, the resource that you pull out or the color that you get might be, may be different. And so that's why um, context is really fundamental to pretty much any kind of, uh, any kind of app. Like you need to be able to know where in the application you are in order to reference the correct underlying Android objects. So hopefully that answers the question. All right, so let's try this out. We added the adapter and now we um, added the layout manager. Okay, so it looks like we see something, but you know, it's kind of weird because we have like each element of the list takes up a whole screen. Right, so if I'm gonna keep scrolling, like we're at person 24 now, 25 and so on. So this is a little bit tricky. This is like one of the most common issues that I see students encounter is what I'm, what I'm showing you here, which is that each element of their recycler view takes up way more height than it should. So does anyone know why this happened? Any guesses? Like why, why, why did we see this bug? Yeah, so exactly. Dean and Yang have exactly right. Yeah, so Dean is saying height is equal to mass parent. I don't know, Dean, maybe you, fit, maybe you encountered this issue when you were doing assignment one, but this is probably the most common thing. I think what Dean is referring to, 
is the following. So if I, let me exit out a couple of these. So if we go back to item person to XML, what this XML component refers to is one element of the recycler view. And so what Dean is pointing out is that if you look at the constraint layout, the height of this component is match parent, which means take up the whole screen height. And that is the issue. So if I change this now to wrap content, do you all see what happened? That blue outline, which represents the height of the view, it went from the bottom of the screen and it shrunk down to just being tall enough to fit the components on the screen. And so now if we try it again, hopefully um, we'll see something much more reasonable. Beautiful, do you all see that? So much better. So now we have our list of 100 different contacts, and this is a recycler view. So you're gonna be implementing a recycler view again in project two, and then again in project three. And you'll probably be implementing it in every Android app that you built. So what questions do you have about what we did? Yes, so R means resource. So like if you, the mapping, the way I think about it is inside of the project directory, you have this Java folder, which is basically the source code. And you also have a res folder, which is standing, which stands for resources. So R is basically the same thing as res. So when I say R to layout item person, what I'm saying is I want to grab the layout, which is referenced by R layout item person. And if you actually look behind the scenes at what happens, let me actually go back. So I'm gonna like hover over here and it says that r.layer.item person is actually an int, which is a little bit confusing, but really here's what happens. When you build your Android app, we take all the resources that are inside of this directory and these are static, static objects or static files, right? They're not gonna change at runtime. And so the Android system will save the information contained in each of these into some fixed location in memory. And that's actually what turns into r to layout the item person into this 130004 because this is a static file. And then the inner system will know at runtime that, okay, when I say inflate this integer with this parent, it knows that I should actually be figuring out and fetching the content of this layout, which is this XML file. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually, that, that's a good question. Honestly, I've never tried. <laughs> this is one of those things that like you almost always want to follow the convention, not only because it might, screw, like I think your question is like, would that screw up the Android Studio build system? I don't have a good answer for that, but there's also a really, another really good reason why you shouldn't do that, which is that as a developer, everyone on your team is going to expect that all the resources, including things like layouts, colors, drawables, all that should live in the res. And so if you mess that up, um, it'll be confusing and it might lead to some build issues. All right, Kevin's asking how much memory would this app use? That's a good question. Um, I don't know, really, I don't have a good like quantifiable answer, but one thing I did wanna do with each of you right now is I think a really cool experiment, which is I wanna show you um, why the recycler view is magical and like why it's so powerful. And the way I'll do that is we talked about how on create view holder is expensive, right? Like the operation of this line right here, this is super expensive because what's happening is you might have this complicated layout, we're inflating it, and we're creating a brand new view holder object based on that view. However, this method on bind view holder is not expensive. So one thing I wanna do with you right now is I just wanna do a quick um, test. So I'm just gonna add a tag here, pirate const val. I'm just gonna add some log statements, okay? So we'll say here, log.i tag. And then I also, in the on bind view holder, I'm gonna print out on bind view holder along with the position. Okay, so does everyone see what's happening here? I'm gonna run the app again, but this time I wanna pay attention to the log output, the log cat. And what I'm telling you is that this method here, this function 
on create view holder is super expensive. This one is not expensive. So if the recycler view is doing its job correctly, we should expect that the expensive operation shouldn't really happen that much. And the inexpensive operation should happen a lot, a lot more. And one way to think about this is that let's go back to the app, right? I'm going to go back up to the top. So here you can see that the number of views that I'm able to see on the screen at one time is about eight. Or maybe you could say nine, like this ninth one is barely peeking out. And so intuitively, what we should expect to see is on create view holder gets called roughly eight or nine times at the beginning of the app. But then as I scroll through, like as I scroll down, I should no longer be creating different views. Once I'm scrolling, I should only be binding data to already created views. Does that make sense? That, that's the magic of recycler view. Does that intuition make sense to people? So I want to, let's test it out. So read on the app and I only want to look at logs from contacts adapter because that is the tag that I gave it over here. So, oops, that was the wrong thing. Okay, so it seems like that's working, but let me just make it a little cleaner. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so the app starts up and immediately we see a bunch of these log statements. So can I make this bigger? Okay, yeah, I can. So the very first log statement I see is on create view holder followed by on bind view holder, which makes sense, right? The very first thing that happens, I need to create a view and then immediately bind the data at position zero onto that. And that process will happen a, a few more times. So now I have created, at this point, I've created um, how many? Nine different views, right? So it starts at zero. I have created nine different views by the time I get to index number eight. So here's the tricky thing, or like the magical part, is as I scroll, I'm scrolling. So do you see what's happening here? So now at position number 12, 13, 14, I am no longer creating views for every contact. At this point, the only thing I'm doing is I'm binding data to existing views. And that's, that's so cool, right? Like now this really expensive thing about having to create more views no longer ever happens because I've done all that already at the very beginning of the app, I've done the expensive work and now my scrolling can be really, really smooth. So, Hopefully that kind of addresses your question, Kevin. If you really want to get tactical and figure out numerically, like how much data is my app using, there's a tab down here called Profiler. And Profiler will actually tell you in terms of like actual megabytes. Let me show you. I think it's freezing for me. Yeah, so this is actually going to tell you like how much memory is your app using, how much CPU is you're using. So you could actually do even more in-depth profiling, but I just wanted to give everyone the intuition that at a high level, this is the expensive thing, this is the inexpensive thing. So Recycler View should be doing its job correctly by optimizing the, like hiding the expensive ones as much as possible. So that was a lot, right? Recycler View, now hopefully you can see it's why it's one of the more complicated components on Android. What questions do you have about Recycler View? So I guess it, there's a couple of things, right? One is that um, that's not really well supported. And the reason is because like that will change based on many factors. So the first factor is like the phone size, right? Like where you are, like what position you're at might change based on if you have tablet or phone. And the other thing, which is I think more important is that most of the time you don't have just one item that you're showing in the recycler view. There's one thing that we haven't talked about yet, which is this, um, this parameter right here, which is called view type. And this might be going in the direction that what you're wondering about, but in most complicated or like sophisticated apps, you're not just going to have one view that you show on the screen you're gonna have maybe five or six or seven. So consider Twitter, right? If you have a retweet or a reply right. or maybe a tweet with an image, that actually will have a very different underlying layout compared to just the single one that we have here. And so typically what'll happen is you'll have like a if statement. You'll say, say if view type is equal to like a tweet with image, then I wanna inflate some other view. 
And then otherwise, check another condition. And then based on which of those you're inflating, you'll reference a different layout. And so that's why it's depending on like what data is actually at that position, you'll, you might have a different, like the height of the views in the recycle view will change. If there are different views, like, like you said, right now, everything is homogeneous. So the, the creation of views only happens once at the very beginning. And then we can reuse all of those views, right? That's what we saw in the log cat. Like all these okay. on create happens at the very beginning and then never again. If we have different kinds of views, then the recycler view will notice as I'm scrolling that, okay, hey, here's a different view type. So I need to now go back and create the view holder and then um, bind that with the different data that I have. Okay. That's what recycler view should take care of for you. This is how you do it. So you, if, if you want the on create view holder for this to be a different method, you have to override this method called get item view type. And what this is saying is I want to get the position at this index. So whatever data lives there, based on that, it's my responsibility to pass back that enum or that int, which represents that view type. Okay, so um, we talked about this briefly last week. Can someone just refresh my memory? What are the main benefits? So now you saw recycle view in action. The previous way of doing recycle, of, of showing a list of items was called list view. And now no one uses that anymore. Everyone uses recycle view. So can someone tell me uh, what are the main like, what are the main benefits of recycler view compared to list view? Anyone? Yes, I think that's, that's probably the main reason I would say, which is performance. And I think with list view, you, it wasn't like egregious where like basically list view, you had a way to optimize it as well, where it didn't have to create the view as much, but it was optional. And so what was happening is there were many Android developers who were screwing it up essentially. <laughs> like they were using list view, but they were using it incorrectly. And that resulted in a really laggy performance. As you're scrolling through, the app just what didn't feel very smooth. And so recycler view mandates in, in how it's architected, it mandates this recycling pattern, which is really good. Um, there's one more question I wanted to ask and have a discussion about, which is thought experiment. Um, what if we have like this list of a hundred people, why couldn't we take a text view and display all the data um, for our list of a hundred people instead of a text view and we just add new lines in between? So I think, like, Dean, I think we had a discussion about this over email. It's like, okay, like one kind of hack way, hack approach to doing a recycler view is just have a text view and don't even have like a, a notion of positions. Simply take all the data, turn it into a long string and set the text of the text view to be that very long string. So why, why doesn't that work? Like, why is that not ideal? Right, I think, so that's one aspect of it. I think what I'm hearing is that you don't really know ahead of time, like at build time, you don't know how much data you're gonna have. And so one issue for sure, which I think is valid, is that the formatting or the fitting all the data into one text view you, you have no guarantees on how it'll look or how to space it out appropriately the same way that you do with a recycler view. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that the, big, the biggest thing in my head is that you just don't have flexibility. So almost always in any kind of list, like a, let's go back to the Twitter example, you're gonna have different components inside of each list element, which will respond to different interactions. So for example, if I have a tweet with an image, tapping on that image should show me a larger picture of that image. Or if I tap on, I don't know, like the retweet button, that should do something else compared to tapping on the underlying text. There's no way to do that if you have like a plain text view, right? You lose all that flexibility. And finally, the other thing is um, you have no notion of position when you just cram everything into a text view, right? So a very common pattern is that I have a list of 100 items and then I wanna insert an item at position number 50. So you really can't do that gracefully with a text view. You would have to basically take all the text, remove all of it, reconstruct the brand new string, which is very long, and then put that back in the text view, right? Like there's no notion of like, okay, let me add an element here and delete an element here. So those are three good reasons why I think you don't, like you need to have a recycler view to display the list of data. Well, so these are kind of sample interview questions. I feel like RecycleView is a very 
common thing in Android. And so if you go out and interview for an Android job, you're going to be asked about Recycler Rio. Um, yeah, this is the answer to the first question. Basically, why do you use Recycler View instead of List View? It's more efficient. You have more flexibility for styling and animation, and there's a better separation of concerns. And the, the downside of Recycler View is that it's more complicated. All right, that's all I had for Recycler View. Um, the last couple minutes, I wanted to talk about intents. But before that, any, anything that you all are wondering about? All right, so intents. We're not gonna be able to have time to code anything up with intents. I'll probably do that next week. But I just wanted to talk about the theory of why are intents so important. So intents are the Android way of communicating between different components. So that, that they really encompass everything. So an intent could be a request to the Android system to I wanna open up something in my own app I want to open up an external application. For example, all Android phones will come with a browser. All Android phones will come with a phone, right? There's a phone typically on every Android phone, on every Android device. So you could say, I want to open up the camera app on my phone. That's an intent. Or it could be an intent to open up a built-in Android service. So for example, there's like some built-in services to get the system clock, the system time. So you could fire off an intent to that service to get the system time and do whatever you want with that in your application. So in, in this class for projects number two and projects number three, uh, we're gonna be focused on using the first way, which is an intent to your own application. And in particular, what I mean is an intent from one activity to another activity. So if you're on activity A and you want to navigate to another activity, the way you do that is by firing off an intent to say, hey, I want to navigate to activity B. And a really common pattern for this is you have a list of items and you want to navigate to a detailed view of that item. So for example, let's go back to Twitter. You have a list of tweets. I tap on one of those tweets. My expectation is that I should see more details about that tweet. The way that works is I fire off an intent and I pass in the data about the data of here's a tweet ID that I care about. And then activity B will use that ID in order to fetch more details about that and show you things like the replies or maybe a higher quality version of the image or whatever else it might want to show. All right, so the most common use case for this is you have a list and you want to go into the detail view. So email list, the detail view, tweet list, a single tweet. And the way this works is you pass in data parameters into the child activity. And the other thing you can do is, so like the terminology here, right? Activity A is the parent activity. Activity B is the child activity. And so a really common thing is that you wanna pass data from the parent to the child. And another common use case is I want to do some kind of computation or I wanna collect user input and I wanna take data from activity B and return that back to activity A. So both, both possibilities are, you can do both things with the intent system. All right, so fundamental to intents is, in, in how we're using them, is I wanna create an intent in order to navigate from one activity to another activity. And so the way that works is you need to create a new XML layout file um, for this new activity. You'll have a, another Kotlin file, which will dictate the business logic for your activity. And finally, this is important, is that you need to add the activity into the Android manifest file. And all of these three steps will be taken care of for you if you have Android Studio help you to create the new activity. So let me show you really quick what, what that looks like. So I'm gonna go into Android Studio. And then the way I typically do this is I will right click on the package name where I want to create the new activity, go to new activity and just create a, let's create a new empty activity. So I'll call this add contact activity. And the convention is that classes in Kotlin should be uppercase and they should end with activity. If you're creating an activity, the suffix of your class should be activity. And so you have the option here for automatically creating a layout file. So I'll hit that, I'll keep that selected and I'll tap on finish. 
So this will take a second or two to finish. Okay, so it looks like it did it. Um, and what you can see here is on the left side, it automatically created this add contact activity, right? And it has automatically overridden this method on create, which is where we are going to dictate the UI for our activity. And here's the layout file, which it automatically created. So I'm gonna go to the declaration of this. I'm gonna right click, go to declaration. And I have the empty layout right here. And the third thing that this did is open up the, um, the manifest file. So by default, we already had main activity, right? That's the activity that came in when we built our project. Android Studio also added one more line here, which is um, add content activity, right? So as a reminder, the Android manifest is intended to essentially be uh, an index of what all the components of your application are. So you have this application tag, and what we're communicating is that there are two activities in our application. One which is called add contact activity and one which is called main activity. So all of this is taken care of for you if you do the thing that I showed where you let Android Studio help you to create the new activity like that, okay? So to create a new intent, the way you do that is you create a new intent object and then you pass in a context and then the second parameter is the destination of where you want to go. So you would say in our example, add contact activity dot Java. If you wanna pass in data along with the intent, you would say, um, this, you would call this method put extra where you'd pass in key and keys and values. So the key is always a string. You'd pass in like tweet ID and you'd pass in the ID of the tweet or the username you'd pass in the string relevant for that username. Uh, one important thing to note that there are two kinds of intents, explicit and implicit. So the one, the one that we've been talking about is called explicit intent, which means that you're gonna launch an activity in your own application. So you explicitly name the destination that you wanna go to. On the other hand, an implicit intent is you, a request to perform an action based on uh, what, what you want to achieve. So for example, every Android app, every Android phone will come with a browser. And so you might want to say, I just want to open this URL in the browser. I don't have a browser in my application. I don't, I don't want to build that. I just want to allow the user to open up a URL from, um, from, from this URL. And so you, the way you do that is you say intent.actionView. Like my intention is to view this URL. And the inner system will then take care of it. So some really common implicit action intents are making a phone call, taking a picture, opening the browser, right? All these things are built into Android but you don't need to build it into your application. So that's why implicit intents are really popular. And then if you want to have your child activity return data back to the parent activity, that's also really easy to do um, by bundling data back up in the resulting activity. So we'll talk more about this next week, but basically if you want to get data back, you call start activity for result in the parent activity and the child activity should call this method set result. And so we'll do an example of that next week. So um, that's all I had in terms of slides. Um, for next week, there are two things I, I'd like you to do. One is start working on the My Maps application. It's a little bit longer than the first one. So I want you to budget like at least two or three hours to go through that. Um, the other thing is I'm gonna send a link out for that mid quarter feedback. So please fill that out by next week. And then here's an optional link. Uh, if you wanna learn how to integrate the camera in your application using an implicit intent, here's a video for that. Cool, so that's all we have for today. Next week we have the guest lecture. So I really would encourage everyone to show up in person so you have the chance to interact with Nikhil and ask whatever you wanna know about building an app that is number one in the, in the app store. Um, I'll stick around for a few minutes if people have questions, but other than that, I'll see you all next week.